with us this morning to the book of Acts, Acts chapter number 3. Acts chapter number 3, we're going to begin at verse number 1 and read the first 10 verses. This is our text this morning. Acts chapter number 3. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered in with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. They knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. and They were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Bow with us. Lord, we pray that you'd open your word to our heart. Lord, may we be faithful to open our heart to your word. Speak it as only you can. May every heart that can hear, hear this. And may it be effectual to them today under salvation. Guide us now. And may this bring Christ all the glory. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to share the story of the lame man today, and I want us to think of him as a lost man. I believe there's a great deal of, of uh, synergy here if we'll think of the man not simply as physically lame, but spiritually lame. The truth is we're all crippled when it comes to God. There's none of us could get to him on our own. We had to be brought to Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Spirit that has the ability to do that. And I'm glad that it's still at work today. Peter and John had went up to the temple. They'd gone there to pray. The ninth hour, about three o'clock every day, there was a prayer that took place. Um, If I'm not mistaken, that still goes on. A prayer in the afternoon. And the scripture said, verse number two is where we'll take the majority of our uh, text this morning. The scripture said that there was a lame man that was brought to the temple every day. And he was laid there at the gate that was called Beautiful daily. And he asked alms to everyone that entered in to the temple. Before we start, there's some things that I don't know. And as I thought about why he was at the place where they entered in as opposed to the place where they went out, uh, I can only speculate. But as I thought about this, I wondered to myself if he thought that being at the place where one entered in might be more of a benefit to him as people sought God going to the temple as opposed to when they come out. I don't know. But I know he was there for a reason. I want you to think about a few things this morning concerning this man. And if you find yourself in the same condition as he was, then maybe God's dealing with you this morning. 
You may have been in this church a hundred times. You may be a member of this church. But if you recognize today for the first time in your life that you are spiritually incapable of getting to God, then I want to invite you to be saved. Amen. If the Holy Spirit is bidding you, then that's truth. And if he's telling you today that you need to be saved, then that is the invitation. Don't wait for me. Right. You obey God. Amen. This man was lame, the Bible said, from birth. I want to share with you a doctrinal truth this morning <laughs> as we begin. Right. It's called the doctrine of original sin. Yeah. Amen. What it means is, is that I was born in the sin. Into sin. Specifically, says conceived in sin. Right. Yes. And the reason is because I received being born as a human from two humans. I received the nature of my parents. Right. And my parents received the nature of their parents all the way back to the original two parents, yeah. Adam and Eve, who both fell in the garden and were cursed. And their offspring received their nature. Yeah. A fallen nature. A sinful nature. We know that. As a matter of fact, Cain killed his own brother. Right. Murdered him. A fallen nature. That quickly right. had fallen into such depravity as he would take the life of his own brother. As a child, we look at these babies that are among us and we think that they are innocent. As far as the world is concerned, they certainly have a lot to learn. Right. And there's some of that I pray they're protected from. Yeah. But they're sinners too. Amen. Yeah. Amen. They're sinners too. See, I was born a sinner. You say, why in the world would God make a, make a plan that the least among us are sinners? Well, he tells us. The Bible said that he made a plan that condemned all of sin so that he might also introduce a salvation that could save all. Right. from sin. The only way to save us all was to have a way that brought us all under the same sin. And when Jesus died on the cross, he died for all sin. Amen. And because men are guilty, we are all under sin. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ was sufficient unto God to pay the price for all sinners. And therefore, he can say today, whosoever will, let him come. Now, what we also know is by truth that there is a point in a child's life that they'll reach that age that they then understand they're a sinner but until they get to that point there's grace see what I know about little children is that though they be born sinners Jesus died for the sinner he died for the sinner what the psalmist David said concerning the death of his, his little child was, he said, I can't bring him back, but I can go to him. Right. We know where babies go to. Amen. We know where little children go to. They go to heaven. You say, preacher, they ain't been saved. May I say to you today, Jesus died for sinners. Right. And for those that have yet to reach that place of accountability, there is grace right. that covers amen. that sin. Aren't you glad of that? Yeah, amen. I prayed the prayer to God in a minute when I prayed. That if any one of my children, if there was a chance they wasn't going to heaven, I'd rather them die. Uh, my, my prayer was they'd not be born. 
Because there's worse things than death. The most important thing for the soul is that they know Jesus. This man was lame from his birth. When he came from his mother's womb, what it says about him was he could not walk. As much as they probably tried to do, as much as they, they, they tried to intervene, this child's feet and his ankle bones were deformed in a way that he could not walk on them. He he couldn't use crutches. There wasn't anything that he could do to be mobile. This child was lame from his birth. And may I say to you and I today that we are sinners from birth. The doctrine of original sin is always and will always be in place. We are sinners alienated from God until we're born again. And only by the grace of God that brings salvation can we know and be delivered from the spiritual lameness that we've had since our birth. We know what takes place with little children, and I wanted to be clear about that, lest someone leave confused. But it does not change the fact that we're all sinners. Right? Right? I mean, it's evident, and I'm going to move on from this point, but it's evident when a little child comes out, it's, it's a sinner. You say, how can you say that? Because it's all about them. Right? Everything they do is screaming about, give me this, give me that, do this to me. Right? You don't have to teach a child to be selfish. That's natural. What you have to teach them to do is to share. Right? So we know that they received our nature, the nature of a sinner, the doctrine of original sin. This man was born lame from his mother's womb. But I want you to notice also that there was somebody that carried him and laid him at the gate every day. There's somebody that is caring for you today, whether you know it or not. Right. Amen. Amen. You may think today that no one cares for your soul, but that wouldn't be true. Right. I can tell you of several folks in this building right now who earnestly care for your soul. They probably take you before God in their private prayer and they talk to you, uh, they talk to him about you because they love you. And their desire is to see you made whole spiritually. And I believe that's part of God's plan. I believe part of learning to love as he loves us is to bear a burden for someone else. And for the children of God today, it ought to be normal for us as we look upon the field that is white unto harvest to be burdened about those that are lost, to worry, to be concerned about the souls of men who do not know Christ. Because what we do know is that we're all sinners and that all need to come to Christ. This man was spiritually lame as well as physically lame, but he was lame from his mother's womb. And the Bible said that they carried him and they laid him there at the gate. I wonder today how many of us are committed to carrying our fellow man. (laughs) How many of us would be willing to do our part? and to carry them to the place where Jesus is. How many of us are willing to intervene in someone else's life and say, you know what, I'll help you. I'll do my best. Would you come with me? Can I come to you? Can I share with you the truth about Jesus Christ? Can I bring to you the word of God? Can I share with you the love that he is giving me? I want you to know there's a responsibility for us to carry one another to the cross. Amen carry him to the cross, but notice also that when they did carry, they did so daily. Now, I calculated this. I had to get a calculator for it. The scripture says in in chapter number four that the man was over 40 years old and that every single day someone carried him to the temple. If he was over 40 years old, I just use 40 as the number. That means over 14,000 days someone carried him to the place where the people went in and out of the temple. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty serious commitment. I wonder today how many of us are truly committed to the soul of those that are lost. 
How many of us are really committed to the place that we are willing to give of our own resources, give of our own time, to give of our own heart, and recognizing that that right we can be hurt or we can be uh, bewildered or we can be done in or whatever you want to say when we commit to do something amen we ought to go all the way with it here was somebody who somebody had to love him they had to care for him because they were willing every day to take him to the temple to lay him right in that same spot every day 14,000 days 10,000 days however many thousand days it was this poor soul laid waiting for someone to have mercy on him how many of us are committed to that let me say this the bible said that they took this man and they laid him at the gate which was called beautiful at the temple the gate they laid him at the gate they didn't take him to the doctor where did they take him to the church because what he had was incurable. There wasn't any reason to take him to a doctor. They took him to the place where he might find mercy and compassion from his fellow man. May I say to you today how important it is for the church to be the place for mercy, the place for compassion, right? I believe people come and certainly there are needs and there's things that motivate people, right? I, I, know, I know several that they got cancer and they, they figured out, you know what, I need God. And thank God they got cancer, right? Because they found Jesus. That was a good thing as far as I'm concerned. This man, wasn't no need to take him to a doctor. His problem was incurable. I May mean, I say to you today that the doctors of this world They can't solve the spiritual problems that are in this world. Right? They're trying to, ain't they? Oh, in the blindness of their own mind, they're trying everything coming and going to tell us what's wrong with this world. And and yet believers are sticking back and shaking their head and saying, no, no, that's not the problem. That's not the problem with this world. The problem is that sin has, has brought forth the consequences and death is ensuing. We're finding that God is moving among us, friend, and that we see the power of God revealed through the judgment as it pours out throughout the ungodly all over this world. You know, the problem is not the coronavirus. The problem is sin. Always has been. It always will be. It's the same problem. But may I say to you today, you won't find the answer in this world. They wasn't taking him to a doctor every day. They were taking him to the church. They were taking him to the temple. Somebody there would have mercy. Somebody would have compassion. And evidently it was true because they took him back the next day. Again and again, they took him back. I want you to notice, as we near the end here, I want you to notice what the young man or the old man, however you look at it, what he was asking for. As he laid there in that same spot, I don't know how uncomfortable it would have been just to lay on the steps of that place every day. But as he laid there and maybe had his little cup or his hat or his plate or whatever he had, maybe just held his hand out. And as people would come up the steps, he would ask them for an offering. He would ask them for some kind of gift. And he would either get it or he wouldn't get it. They would go on. But oftentimes what we think we need is not what we really need. Right, amen. This man every day was seeking for something so that he might be able to find some existence in this life. He had no way to make a living. He couldn't walk. He couldn't do anything to be productive in society. And so he simply worked from the mercies and the compassion of other people. And that was how he survived. But oh, he was fixing to get something more. What he really needed, you see, wasn't necessarily the things of this world, the money. What he really needed was something far greater. They brought him every day and they laid him at the gate that was called beautiful. May I say to you today that when you bring somebody to church, it's still beautiful. You're bringing them to the right place. How many of you are trying to bring somebody 
How many of you are really trying to bring somebody to the house of God? I actually believe if we can get them here, something will happen to them. I believe they'll be confronted by what this man was confronted with that day because he's fixing to meet two old boys that were different than the ones that had passed before. These fellas wasn't filled with pockets of gold or silver or anything that might give him sustenance for that day. These fellas had something that he really needed. And oh, how I believe that if we could get people into the house of God, they'll find what they really need. They'll find that there is something that can happen to them that is eternal in its scope. Jesus was faithful to heal and certainly healed the lame. But here was a man that didn't get healed. Here was a man that may have heard of Jesus, may have seen Jesus as Jesus went in and out of the temple. Jesus even healed a man inside the temple that had a withered hand. There were things that Jesus was doing all around. Where was this guy then? They said they laid him at the gate. Had he never called? Had he never asked? Had he never? I can tell you this way. Everybody knew this man because he laid right there in the same spot every day. Every day, every day, they knew who the lame man was. How do you know? Because we find in the fourth chapter that the Pharisees said everybody knows him and we know that he's walking and he never could before. There was a miracle that was done that day. As this man laid at the gate, which was called beautiful, Peter and John entering into the temple, he held out his hand for an alms held out his hand expecting something, anything. Peter looked at him. (laughs) I'm going to close with this. Peter looked at him and he said, look on us. Look at me. He said, I don't have any silver or gold for you. And I likely believe he was telling the truth. Peter probably didn't have a nickel he could give to the man. He said, I don't have any silver and gold to you. He said, but what I do have, he said, I'll give it to you. Now, on those disciples had been, had been given the power to heal as Jesus healed. And he looked at that man and he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand. And as he lifted him up, his ankle bones and his feet received strength immediately. And as the man stood up on his own feet for the first time in his entire life, he began to praise God. And then he started to jump up and down on those feet. He started to run and then he'd walk and he'd jump up and down. And as Peter and John went in on into the temple, he followed them in there and he was still jumping up and down. Wouldn't you? Right, amen. Amen. He didn't get any gold that day. He got something better. Somebody took me to church. Somebody invited me to the place. Somebody brought me to the place. I don't know what your story is, but here's what I can tell you. Somebody got you to Jesus. And when you found Jesus, you got more than you were expecting. You got something far greater than silver or gold. No, I got a gift that keeps opening. Every day it's something new. Every day he's giving me again and again. No, this man got something far better than he had ever got before. He received everlasting life. What a joy. What a joy. And yet some of us sit right now in the midst of the one that can heal And we don't even hold our hand out. We don't even ask. We won't receive the gift. Is that you today? Come and get a song. Is that you this morning? You know right now that you're spiritually lame, broken. You can't heal yourself. You know that. You don't have the ability to heal yourself spiritually. You don't have the ability to make yourself what it needs to be to inherit the kingdom of God. You have no way to get to God. 
And yet right before you is the answer. Right before you today is the one that is simply saying, look at me. Look at me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm going to ask you this morning to rise up and walk. Say, preacher, I need a hand. There's somebody that will help you. You won't be alone if you come to this altar. But that's not the ones that you need. No, the important thing is that you receive of God today the gift that man can't give. It's for you today. I don't know your heart, but you do. You know your spiritual condition right now. You know if you're spiritually bankrupt and need Jesus. I'm going to ask you to be saved today. If you don't know that you've been born again, would you come? Would you bow before him and ask him? Ask him. He'll save you. He'll change you. You'll never be the same again. You will be able to then worship and praise, leap and glorify his name when you get born again. Would you stand with us? If you're here this morning and you have a need, If you know right now that you're not in that place you need to be, come.